Deep vein thrombosis. Discover the symptoms, causes, treatments and exercises to fight it. Hello and welcome to this video, today we will be discussing deep vein thrombosis, a problem that is becoming increasingly common in the population over 50 that has recently been emerging as a side effect of vaccination. Together we will look at the causes, symptoms, how to treat it both medically and through exercises and diet, what home remedies you can put into practice right away to prevent it, and then we will look at prevention but especially the complications that can sometimes be serious and dangerous and that you must know to understand how to deal with it in the best way. If you like the video and want to help us continue creating interesting content, we kindly ask you to consider the idea of subscribing to our channel and making a donation to support us. Your support is precious to us and will allow us to continue growing and improving our channel. You can do it here below, through the appropriate buttons, subscribe, and thanks. Deep vein thrombosis, as the name suggests, is a situation that occurs in the veins, particularly the deeper veins that are in the legs, arms, in which the blood changes from liquid to solid forming a clot, as you can see from this image. The formation of the clot leads to a true restriction of blood flow, sometimes with a complete occlusion of the vein, which does not allow the blood to flow where it should. I imagine that you too will realize how serious this situation can be if the blood no longer flows correctly, if there is a blockage, a restriction and it can no longer return the blood to the heart, you will end up having symptoms in the periphery, right where the blockage is. Unfortunately, however, the data tells us that only one in two people have symptoms, feels disturbances when they have this problem. Many times this condition can go unnoticed, leading to much more serious complications that I will explain later. What are the most common symptoms? Obviously when there is a stagnation of fluids, when there is no longer a passage of blood from the periphery to the center, the first thing you might see is swelling. Swelling that if a blockage is in the leg, you will see in the calf, in the ankle, with associated pain. Typically there will be a swollen calf, red, with a change in coloration, it could be paler or bright red, and you could have severe pain that does not go away even if you change position. Cramps are very common and you may feel the areas of the leg much warmer than other parts of the body. I am talking about thrombosis in the leg, the most common symptoms in the leg, because it is the highest percentage of problems related to deep vein thrombosis, but this could very well happen in an artery at the abdominal level or in the arms. In these cases the symptoms are always swelling and pain right in the arm or in the area that is blocked, but also obviously pain in the neck and shoulders. What are the most common causes of thrombosis? There are two types, modifiable and non-modifiable. Among the non-modifiable causes are injuries, injuries. For example, if you have an injury, trauma, a bone fracture that also damages a vein, the underlying repair process, the formation of scarring clots, could lead to deep vein thrombosis. Surgery is another of the most common risks that increase the likelihood of deep vein thrombosis, not only because during surgery there may be damage to the veins, but also because often rehabilitation begins too late after surgery and you may stay in bed for too long. Immobility is in fact one of the other determining factors of possible risks of deep vein thrombosis, immobility that for some people is an unmodifiable thing because they have perhaps had pathological conditions that do not allow them to move or get up and walk. Sometimes, on the other hand, it is a modifiable factor, because it is precisely linked to our sedentary lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle that falls into those modifiable factors, that is, those factors that you can modify if you change your lifestyle to greatly reduce the risks of developing this disturbance so unpleasant. There is overweight, there is smoking, there is spending a lot of time sitting at the computer or for example a very common thing after a long flight or train ride. For women, there are two situations that lead to an increased risk of thrombosis. The first is pregnancy, the second is the use of contraceptive pills. In both of these two conditions, the blood viscosity increases and the risk of clots becomes increasingly higher. Obviously, if you have hereditary factors that increase blood viscosity, you are at high risk, but another very common situation in people over 50 is having heart failure. A previous problem with the heart that causes your heart not to pump enough blood into the blood vessels, slowing down the fluidity of the blood, leading you to then develop these peripheral clots much more easily. Let's look at how this problem, which is an emergency situation, can be treated. If you find yourself with some of these symptoms, if you suspect you have deep vein thrombosis, call your doctor immediately, 
go to the emergency room, because there are very serious complications, including pulmonary emboli, which I will explain later. Then I will also give you precise symptoms that give you a clear idea if you are having a pulmonary embolism. The treatment is mainly medical and pharmacological and is aimed at preventing increased coagulation, preventing clots, or emboli, from breaking off and then going around in the bloodstream and reaching the lungs. If one of these clots breaks off and should ever reach the lungs, what could happen to you is a blockage of breathing, a pulmonary embolism, which is a medical emergency to be dealt with in the emergency room. As a first medical measure to overcome deep vein thrombosis, however, there are drugs, anticoagulant drugs, heparin, coumadin, lovinox, just to name a few. I am sure that if you have had surgery you will be very familiar with these drugs, precisely because it is the daily practice after surgery. These drugs on the one hand help you to thin the blood, to make it less viscous, on the other hand there are more aggressive, more specific drugs, which go directly to break up the clot and are in fact called thrombolytics. To be sure that you have deep vein thrombosis, if you go to the hospital, the doctor will first ask you about your medical history, if you have any particular symptoms, but since there are no symptoms one out of two times, what you could do is have an ultrasound. With ultrasound or with venography, the doctor can see if there is blood flow, if the blood flow is correct and therefore everything is normal, or if instead there are blocks. In less serious cases, drug therapy is sufficient. In some other situations, surgery is required, which unfortunately is the last therapeutic possibility, also because as we said before, the surgery itself increases the risk of clots and so it is a bit of a dog chasing its tail. Certainly, there are situations of extreme emergency where it is useful for the doctor to enter, open the vein and remove the clot manually, directly with the scalpel. 746, on the other hand, however, it is better to prevent, use drugs or other alternative therapies. The most common and effective alternative therapy that accompanies the drug is the use of compression stockings and exercises. The compression stocking, sometimes very uncomfortable, is a stocking that has quite high resistance, you will feel your leg really very tight, and it is a stocking that starts from the foot and goes up to the groin. On the other hand, there are exercises that are really fundamental, because if there is a way to improve the fluidity of the blood, it is precisely through muscle contraction, which helps to restore correct blood flow. In the first exercise, you lie down on the bed and bring your knees to your chest, Bring your knee as close as possible and then with your foot make circles as wide as possible. In the second exercise, on the other hand, you sit down, rest your foot on the floor and from there lift the tips of your feet up and down, creating this pumping function that by contracting you, relaxing you, help the venous flow return to normal. And when you're at home, what can you do? First of all, rule number one, keep your legs slightly raised. Put a pillow at the base of the bed, under the mattress, to sleep with your legs slightly raised. In this way, you will facilitate blood flow, the return of venous blood from the periphery to the heart. The second thing that is extremely useful is to walk, walk often and move as much as possible, walk to move your legs, but also do exercises for your arms, chest, abs. If you can't move one leg because it hurts, you can still bend your arms, extend them, lift weights with your upper limbs, because it is extremely useful, because you set the heart in motion which pumps more and will therefore also improve circulation at the peripheral level of the legs. The third thing is to wear, even if they are uncomfortable, even if it is not very pleasant, anti-thrombotic stockings. Many people today avoid wearing them, at first they try them, but then since they are uncomfortable they take them off and unconsciously or consciously they are putting themselves at very high risk, precisely because the stockings are necessary to prevent clots. Let's move on to the most serious part, the most complex part, the possible complications of deep vein thrombosis. As I told you before, the most serious risk is that of having a pulmonary embolism, it means that a small piece of this clot breaks off, emigrates from the periphery, from the leg, up to the lungs. At the pulmonary level, the veins, the arteries are so small that this clot creates a true occlusion. But while in the legs there are no vital tissues, there are no vital organs to protect, and therefore you could even go a day without adequate blood flow and perhaps not even notice it, only have some pain, some cramps, but go on without realizing it, when the clot instead reaches the lungs, then things get complicated, precisely because it is a vital organ, precisely because its functions are directly connected both to the heart and to the brain. 
At that point, you could suffer from very severe symptoms, from dizziness, from an accelerated heartbeat, with excessive sweating, severe chest pain, and in the most extreme cases, you could even cough up blood. Obviously, this is a medical emergency, run to the emergency room immediately. But if you put into practice all those preventive tips I was telling you about before, the stockings, the drugs, the exercise, the movement and raising your legs, you can greatly reduce the risk of this very serious complication. Obviously, among the modifiable causes and prevention factors, there is diet. What you eat directly influences both the viscosity of your blood, how fluid the blood is and how the blood instead has the ability to form clots, and the health of your venous walls, if they are elastic, if they are soft, if they can easily modify themselves, or if instead they become rigid and unmodifiable and therefore much more frequently go towards lesions and clots. An anti-inflammatory diet, a diet rich in vegetables, fruit, legumes and whole grains, is the most effective diet both for your general health, for having always elastic and fit veins, and for greatly reducing the risk of clots. Pay attention to one thing regarding the diet, if you are already taking anticoagulant drugs, some vegetables or certain types of fruit can interfere with the action of these drugs. An excess of vitamin K can for example increase the coagulability of your blood and therefore interfere with Coumadin. For this reason, before changing your diet, talk to a nutritionist, talk to your doctor, discuss well together how to increase certain foods and slowly reprogram the dose of medication to balance this new situation. Eat healthy, always do plenty of physical activity and sleep at least 8 hours a day, and you will see that you can overcome even this serious problem. Let us know about your practical experience regarding today's topic by writing it in the comments. And do not hesitate to ask questions, we will respond to the best of our ability. Do not forget to share your opinion with us and leave a comment. If you also leave a like, it would be great, subscribe so you don't miss the next video.